what is your sex life like and what is it like in lef later life and has it changed? If you have a question, I've got a panel of experts here uh, on BBC Radio Nottingham. They are Rebecca Dakin, who's known as the great British sexpert from Nottingham, and Dr Imi Ahmed is in charge of sexual health for the Queen's and City Hospitals in the city. Good morning to you both. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so listening to that, did that surprise you, Rebecca, some of those reactions there? No, not at all. I think that, you know, over time, obviously, it, people do evolve into more of a friendship. Um, and what the gentleman said at the beginning is absolutely right. It's not all about the sex. It's about keeping that intimacy um, and connection. I think people can sometimes get too hung up on the sex. However, I, I, with some of these surveys and things, you know, sometimes you wonder how honest people are being when they're saying, oh, I'm really happy in this relationship without any sex, because, you know, I'm not sure that's strictly true for for everybody. So 61% of people, yeah, think it's possible to have a happy marriage without sex. Yeah. So you they disagree say. with that, do you? <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't be... Mm. I'm not sure how honest people are when they're doing these surveys, that's all, I, all that I would say. Mm. And how do you define sex? Is it about sort of penetration or is it about, you know, intimacy in, in general? People have different ideas of what they class sex to be. So, yeah, intimacy is the most important thing. Here's a, a text from Pam. Uh, sex life, question mark, a distant memory. I'm oh. not too bothered, but I do miss the other aspects of a relationship. Swing from the chandeliers, it takes me all my time to dust them. So, <laughs> <laughs> says, uh, says, says Pam. A distant memory, but not too bothered. Yeah, I think with, with women sometimes later on in life and they're going through the menopause and there's, there's certain things that, that can affect sex drive, but, but for both you know men and women, depending on you know stress levels and jobs and things. But I think women seem to be more generally more happy to leave it than, than men. Mm, mm. I suppose Viagra has changed the whole scene completely then, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, the biggest complaint that I get when I'm working with, with women is that they say to me that every sort of touch or every kiss has to lead to sex. So what happens is they then avoid the intimacy, which then makes the, you know, which disconnects the relationship. And so, you know, you've got, you know, the men saying, well, I'm bored and sort of, that's a very negative thing about what they want. And the women saying, you know, uh, everything has to lead to, to sex and, and that's what, what they don't want, which is a very negative thing. So you've got these two negative uh, things going head to head that are not going to actually get any compromise and, you know, any, any intimacy. Mm. So um, how interesting. What, what do you do with that then? What you do with that is that it's all about opening the, the communication lines and actually if you make your focus about giving your partner pleasure, and I don't mean giving into their every whim, and, uh, but I mean focusing on their pleasure and what they want rather than what you want um, and sort of finding a way to compromise and not you know not do anything that you don't want to do um that's what what sort of brings you got it's a matter of meeting in the middle so that you both you know you're both getting something out mm. of it and you're not fighting each other and just relaxing bringing bringing the spark back by you know sometimes if, if people say well, i'm not attracted to my partner anymore well well if, if that's the case then find what it is that's going to bring that attraction back so it might be looking on old photographs and bringing back memories and and going back to taking things back to a time when you were happy and you did have a good sex life and bringing those to the forefront that actually gets you more in the you know more in the mood and love and sex yeah. i had an interesting discussion with andy's on our breakfast this morning because i was saying it's all part of love and he was like well it can be completely separate can't and is it necessarily Absolutely. better if you're in love or, or not? Well, it's you can. Well, it, it's not better or worse. They're two different things, aren't they? So you know, people can be. You can be in love with someone, or you can love someone, but that doesn't mean necessarily mean it's sexual. So you often find with, or well, you can find with couples that what goes from a, a sexual loving relationship then ends up as more they they love that person, but they're not. They don't feel sexually attracted to them, and there's no sort of there's no sort of intimacy. Mm. So you can, they're two different things, and things can change over time. Mm. Uh, one of the things we've discussed this week is the divorce rate in the over fifties is is one of the only age groups where it's where it's rising, uh, the divorce rate. Which I suppose you can interpret that to mean people are starting new relationships in their fifties, sixties, and seventies, mm. and they're dating. And then is sex a part of that in your experience? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, even when people are older and they're retired, they've got more time, less stress. So very often yeah. they have the, the kids, you know, no the kids. <laughs> exactly. They've got the time, and you know, couples, you know, have got the opportunity to have a good, intimate relationship at that at that age. Um, so yeah, absolutely.
Rebecca, thank you. Uh, she's welcome. known as the Great British Sexpert. And uh, Dr. Imi Ahmed is here as well, and we're going to hear from him in the next five minutes, uh, particularly with regard to sexual health. But if you have a question, and I know this is a bit awkward, but uh, if you're brave enough, uh, you can come on the radio or we can ask a question for you anonymously on 93434. This is BBC Radio Nottingham. It's 14 minutes to 10 o'clock. I'm Sarah Julian. Fascinating discussions already this morning on the subject of love and particularly today, sex. And uh, a guest for you now, Dr. Imi Ahmed, is in charge of sexual health for the Queen's and City Hospitals. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, so, in, in terms of treating people for problems in their sex lives, what, what kind of things do you deal with? Yeah, I mean, we have a comprehensive sexual health service, which uh, the main focus that most people will have heard about is providing um, testing and treatment for sexually transmitted infections. But we also have a, within our service, a sexual dysfunction service, which deals with a whole plethora of sexual related problems from relationship issues to cultural conflict to physical issues where people are finding sex difficult or painful. There's a whole range of scenarios with which we, which we deal with. It's not an easy so, subject to talk about. I'm kind of finding this a little bit on the radio this morning, but you are quite comfortable with yes, it. Yes, I mean, I think that's, that's our job. Uh, and that's what our staff are trained for. And I think part of being able to work in this specialty is to be able to be relaxed about it and talk about it because there's a whole range of sexual practices and, and, and norms and taboos which uh, you know uh, have evolved over time mm. and, and we need to be able to discuss these. You mentioned clashes of culture and mm. different ages, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, uh, if I'm being a bit more specific, we are seeing for instance uh, within our local Asian community, uh, we have um, a, a good deal of arranged marriages where you might have a young girl or a young boy who's been brought and uh, born and brought up in this country uh, with a very Western lifestyle with the expectations that our young people have. And then they marry somebody from the subcontinent who comes from a very uh, different cultural, although the same basic culture, but the cultural norms are different, the expectations are different, uh, and they just put together and expected to get on, and mm. therein lies the conflict. And, mm. and some type of ways in which the conflict manifests is that their sex life isn't existent because the expectations are so different. And so it's trying to match those and trying to enable people to, to meet each other somewhere in between that. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about loving later life this week, and you've been hearing about second marriages and you know the divorce rate rising amongst the over fifties, people starting new relationships, and uh, sadly, I suppose to go along with that, there's been a rise in sexually transmitted in infections. Is that something you're seeing? Yeah, in, indeed. And 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 you you mentioned the the national sex survey, which happens every ten years, and that has shown us some very interesting trends of how. Uh, people's sexual habits and sexual preferences have changed over time. And one of the things that came out of that was that there is a very definite trend towards people re-establishing new relationships in their middle uh, and later lives. And there comes with it some baggage because sexually transmitted infections for the vast majority of people, particularly women, do not cause any symptoms. So unless you go and be tested, when you're about to start a new relationship or if you have sex with a new partner, you wouldn't know you've got something. Yeah. So why are the over 50s not more careful then? You know, they're old enough to know better, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> well, one, would, one would think so. I, I think it's also partly uh, our specialists who are to blame because over many, many years we have focused our services primarily towards young people where the main burden of the problem sits and we've almost forgotten that there is life after 40 as well mm -hmm. and yeah. it's, it's recognizing that people continue to have sex throughout their lives and that uh, you know new relationships are being formed and we need to enable them to access our services just as easily as we want young people to come to us. Mm -hmm. and, and the question for both of you really then to finish, I mean you know we're finding it a bit difficult to talk about sex this morning on the radio and, and I know that and yet everywhere you look on adverts on the telly on the films it's sex everywhere in the magazines and, and some people say we live in a sex obsessed world and is that a difficulty in itself do you think? Uh, it is for certain sections of our population because they, their cultural norms might be different from what they're being bombarded with through all the media. And th that, that brings with it conflict. 
and it's dealing with that conflict, which is where people like my, my friend here, uh, who uh, specializes in helping, and, and I think we need a whole range of experts and help that, that can help our, mm. our, our people along. And maybe it's setting up an expectation that, that you should look a certain way and it should, <laughs> things should be a certain way and frankly absolutely. it's not really normal. No, no, no absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely well not. also it's the fact that, that so many youngsters have got uh, insecurities because they're looking at all these magazines and, and the, these videos of all these, you know, s uh, these sexy women and, and, and all the surgery and things and, and they're looking and thinking this is what I have to be like to be acceptable and then you've got guys that are watching a lot of porn and are looking at women there and thinking this is what I want this is what women like and you know and you've got that whole sort of you know yeah like you say it's down to expectation and it's really sad because the whole thing that's missing there is really that focusing on on a connection with somebody and and building intimacy um, and long-term enjoyment we're in a world where we just want everything fast 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 you know quick one night stands quick this quick that um, but you know what's missing there is you don't get the opportunity to build you know because people are impatient build that that long um, a relationship where you really get to, to enjoy intimacy and get a, a strong connection with someone where you you know and have mutually satisfying sex mm. so everybody stays unhappy <laughs> and miserable <laughs> there's so much to talk about thank you very much for coming in it's been really thank really you. interesting and uh, I appreciate your frankness as well it's been really and it's your birthday it is my 40th happy birthday you're coming on the radio to talk about sex on your mother. But you have got some cake, haven't you? You both have cake. We've yeah. had ours, actually. Yeah. Where, where's mine? Oh, there is some left. Is we there saved there you a little bit. Some crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely to meet you both. Thank uh, you. Seven minutes to ten. BBC Radio Nottingham. Good morning.